What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. I'm Matt Wilde and over the last few years I have been recording my upright piano which has been the centre point of all of my music so far. I've not always used this piano or these microphones and it's definitely possible to get a really good sound using budget friendly gear. But for those of you interested I will talk you through three different techniques that I use to record my piano and see which ones you prefer. I'm not using a preamp for these examples and I'll try and keep the volume of each recording consistent and the same so you can compare. So the setup that I've got ready here is one that I was using today on a recording and is probably the most common setup that I'm using at the moment. So basically on the piano I take the front panel off and I set up a pair of microphones. These are the Soyuz 013 FETs, uh, really lovely microphones. And I set them, I don't know, approximately 30 centimeters apart. And for the style of music I'm making, I really enjoy um, the warm sound of this felt here on the piano. Um, so without it, it's very bright. Um, but with the felt, it softens the sound and makes it a bit more rounded and warm. And I'm pointing the capsules, front bit of each microphone, directly at the string, so down a little bit towards the strings, and it's fairly close from the strings, maybe 15 centimeters or so. Um, that's just how I like it. So let's check out how that sounds. So the second microphone position that I use really frequently is the one that you can see behind me. The front panel is back on, the microphones are pointing downwards towards the strings with the lid open. Here I've got the microphones about 10 centimeters away from the hammers and they are spaced the same as earlier around 30 centimeters apart. This way the piano is quieter in the room which is perfect for practice but the microphones are still ready to go when inspiration strikes or if I want to record my practice sessions. Let's check out how that sounds. So the final mic position that I like to use is a bit more of a discreet one. It involves just using one microphone compared to two, like we were using in the other examples. So for this setup, I've got one microphone pointing at the bottom panel of the piano. On the right hand side, very close to the soundboard, pointing directly at it. And you might think that this is quite a strange setup, but it can yield some really nice results. For this one, I would experiment moving the microphone position, 
really close to the soundboard, far away from the soundboard, and here I've got it to the right, but sometimes you can go slightly more to the middle and maybe even the left, depending on the type of piece that you're playing or recording that you're capturing. I've chosen to position the microphone towards the right hand side so that it doesn't capture as much of the bass in the piano and instead it focuses more on the treble because on the right hand side are the higher keys and more treble. Let's check out how this one microphone recording sounds. Now that we've recorded the piano and you've heard it unedited, recorded straight through the microphones, let me show you the plugins and process that I use to make the piano sound even better. So I've got a basic piano chain that I've saved as a preset for moments like this. It has some fundamental plugins that I really like using as a good starting point. Because we didn't record with a preamp, I will use a preamp plugin to emulate that here. Here I'm using the Neve 1084. Let's listen to what the piano sounds like without it. That arpeggio is a good example. Now with. You can hear that it just brings out the detail of the piano and that's mostly coming from the EQ here. And even though it's EQ'd, I'll then add an EQ. I use EQ8, which is Ableton's stock EQ plugin. And I have a few things going on. Firstly, I roll off the frequencies below 60 hertz. Let's hear how they sound if we can. You might not be able to hear that unless you're using headphones, but it's just really muddy. If I am recording other instruments, like I have a bass going on, I might increase that frequency even more to allow for the bass instruments to occupy that frequency range. But because we don't have any instruments here, I think that sounds good. And then I dip certain frequencies and I know that for this, this room that I'm in, there's a bit of a low mid buildup. So there's a bit of resonance going on in this frequency range. Let me, whoops, in this frequency range here. So that's at around 225 Hertz and 587. Let's hear how those frequencies sound in this room. Oh, so you can hear how that just sounds nasty. So one thing that I like doing is taking a uh, band and sweeping. On Ableton here, I'm using this solo button when it's, in, when it's engaged and blue. That means that we're just soloing the frequencies and that's enabling us to hear an exaggerated version of the frequencies that we are ultimately trying to get rid of. So you can hear there, big build up and it's sounding really like, almost like a whale <laughs> under the ocean. And so, so once we found that, I like to reduce the gain anywhere between like minus 10 and minus four, just to taste. And then finally, I have a lift at around 10k hertz, which just brightens the sound a bit and makes it more present. So that's just the upper frequencies that we're boosting. So that's EQ and preamp. And I really like to run my piano through a compressor. Here I'm using the LA-2A. You don't really need a compressor when you're recording or mixing a piano, 
in my experience because it's a very dynamic instrument. But I enjoy using the LA-2A specifically because the gain knob adds a really nice texture, colour, warmth, tone, whatever you want to call it, even if the peak reduction isn't engaged, which basically means the compressor's not really working. It's quite a simple compressor to use because it only has two or three knobs. The two that I'm using mostly are the gain knob here and the peak reduction knob. I like to dial in the gain just to taste so it increases the volume. And then I will experiment with the peak reduction knob so that the loudest part of the piano recording engages the dial or compressor to no more than minus 3 dB, which in simple terms is very gentle compression. Here's what it would sound like if I engage the compressor even more. So you can hear that the dynamic range is just slammed. So dial it back, so no more than minus three. Cool. And so that's the basic processing chain that I use at the moment. Let me show you some extras to achieve a more characterful sound. So Ableton have a preset for reverb called Piano Hall that I've been using for years. And I've tried so many different reverb sounds and this particular preset is such a great starting point, at least for me and to my ears, for mixing piano or at least adding reverb uh, to your recordings. So here's how it sounds at 50%. Let me increase that even more. So that's not how I would actually have it, but I would dial it back to anywhere between 10 and 20%. And then the final thing that I like to add to make the piano sound more characterful is saturation. There are different plugins for this, but one that I'd recommend is Saturation Knob by Softube. It's absolutely free, which is really nice. And here's how, let me find that. Here's how that will sound. It literally has one parameter and that is saturation. So from dry or off to on. So that's pretty engaged and you can see that there. But where you hear the distortion, that's not what I'm after. If you just pull it back a little bit, you can find a really nice sweet spot. And that's it. Let's listen to that. So that's three different ways you can record an upright piano. Of course, there are an infinite number of different techniques. They're just the ones that I'm using at the moment. I hope you found this video enjoyable and useful. Let me know down below in the comments which is your favorite, if you have one, and if you have any other techniques that you think I should try out, let me know. We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers, so if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really makes a massive difference. Catch you in the next video.